Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure OSPF, very basic configuration, and we're going to be using Practice Topology 5. As you can see here, three routers, a loop back on each router. If you don't know how to set up Practice Topology 5, you can click on the annotation in the upper right hand corner. And the topics we're going to cover are OSPF basics, the popularity of OSPF, how to start it, how to move networks and interfaces into OSPF, that's going to be with the network command, and verification using show IP protocols, show IP route, and show IP OSPF neighbors. All right, so OSPF popularity. What you'll see in real life is that OSPF is probably going to be the main IGP or interior gateway protocol that you will be using. I know some places still use RIP and some Cisco shops will use EIGRP, but for the most part, you're going to see OSPF. It's going to be the primary, primary protocol you'll be working with. And going to first bring in router 1's configuration. All the IP addresses are already on there. Starting the OSPF process is really easy. We have to go and enable ConfT. And let me just make my terminal window, make the font a little bit bigger, clear type, and we'll do a 14 point font. There you go. A little bit too big, but that's okay. All right, to start OSPF, it's router OSPF, and then we have to give it a process ID number. And this is locally significant. So on router one, we could do router OSPF one. On router two, we could do router OSPF two. Doesn't really matter. But for simplicity's sake, you probably want to make it the same number. Now, when you get into MPLS and MPLS VPNs, you do have VRF aware OSPF. And that means you could assign an OSPF process for each customer that you connect to. But for now, if you're doing CCNA, and basic CCNP stuff, router OSPF1 is generally what you will type in. Now, as you can see, it brings you into router configuration mode and your commands are going to be specific to OSPF. So router OSPF1 starts the OSPF process, but your router is not actually listening to OSPF just yet and also it's not sending out any OSPF information. To start that, we actually have to put our networks into OSPF, and we specifically do that by specifying an interface to start OSPF on. And that, in turn, will bring the network that is attached to the interface into OSPF. And that's going to be made a little bit more clearer as we go on. As you can see on router 1, we've got actually two interfaces. We've got a loopback interface. And we've got a fast Ethernet interface. Actually, let me just click on this GNS3 button right here that will show the links. So that is fast zero, zero. Okay, so we're gonna start by typing in the network command. Now, what's weird about this is even though the command starts with network, you're not technically putting the network into OSPF. You're putting the interface that belongs with that network into OSPF. So just to prove the point, we see on router one, it's fast ethernet 00. That IP address starts with 10.10.12.x. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm going to type in network 10.0.0.0. Hit space and hit question mark, and we're looking at wildcard bits, wildcard bits. So the wildcard bits, if you've been studying for this particular one, if we just want to match on the 10, we're going to put 0 0.255.255.255. You can basically think of it as an inverse of the network mask that you've been normally using. So if you wanted to do a network mask of this, it would be 255.000 if you wanted to match on the 10. So what you do is you flip the 255 and the zeros, and you end up with 0 and then three two five fives after that. Hit space and question mark, and then we're gonna type in area zero. So with OSPF, you break up your network into different areas. 
a lot of places use single area OSPF if they're small. And as your network grows larger, you'll want to make more areas. So uh, area zero, you definitely you always need an area zero if you have multiple areas. And then you'll have area one that connects off of area zero, area two, and then whatever you want. And we'll cover that in later videos. But for now, network 10000, and then a wildcard mask, and then area zero. Let's hit enter right there. Now notice, as you look at the IP address of this, and our IP address of this interface is 10.10.12.1, notice that when we typed in the network statement, it's not exactly what our interface address is. But what's going to happen is the router is going to look at this statement and go, okay, I want to match everything that starts with 10. This interface matches, and then I'm going to throw this interface into OSPF. And just to prove that to you, we're going to go a little bit early and do our verification command here. It's show IP protocols. And you can see here that OSPF1 is listed, and we are routing for this network 10.0.0.0. And what we'll see later is that when we do a show IP route on the other routers, it will actually see 10.10.12 in the routing table and not actually 10.0.0.0. Okay, so that's the major distinction. That network command is not putting in 10.0.0.0 in the routing table of the other routers. It's actually matching the interface that belongs to this and then putting the IP address assigned to that particular interface. Okay. Let's go back into OSPF. So conf t router OSPF1 network. And here we're going to match it exactly. So network 1111. And if we want to match a slash 32, it's all zeros in area zero. So that would throw a loop back zero into OSPF. We also could have done network one zero zero zero. We also could have done one one zero zero if we wanted to. All of those will work as long as it contains one 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 one. It will work. Here though, we're going to match it exactly, and we're going to put it into area zero. Hit enter on that. I'm going to exit out. Show IP route is not going to show anything because the other routers on our network do not have OSPF running. But if we do a debug IP packet, you will see that our router is definitely sending stuff out through the OSPF process. I'm going to wait about 10 seconds and there we go. So you can see our router is sending out stuff to the multicast address of 224. 005. And in another video, I'll explain exactly what that is. But for now, we'll stop it. So we have OSPF running on router 1. So it's sending out OSPF packets this way. OSPF hellos. And it's also listening to OSPF hellos coming from the other side. So now we're going to go to router 2. Do it enable conf t router OSPF1. And here I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use the Hail Mary, what I call the Hail Mary network statement, network 0000, and then 255, 255, 255, 255, area 0. What this will do is it will throw everything into OSPF. So what that means is on router 2, we've got this link between router 1 and router 2. We've got the link between router 2 and router 3, and we have the loop back right here. And it's this command will match all IP addresses, so it will match all interfaces, and throw three networks into OSPF. So let's do that command. Go back here to the, to the console window here. We'll hit enter. And in a couple seconds, our neighborship comes up, which is pretty cool, our adjacency. So what happened here is as soon as I started that network statement, our router started sending out hellos. 
and also started listening to hellos coming from router one. So it's list sending stuff out this way and also receiving stuff coming from router one. The two routers talk and we'll go over that sequence of what happens when they form adjacencies later. And then after they form the adjacency, we got this wonderful message here going from loading to full. And if we do a show IP route, we're going to see that we have some O routes. We have one O route coming from router one. And that goes to the loopback of router one. So you can see there I can get to 1.1.1.1 via 10.10.12.1, which is this side of the link. And we could verify that on router 2. Let's ping all ones. And we have a successful ping. Now you may be wondering, okay, I thought I was advertising 10.10.12.0 through OSPF. How come I don't see that in my routing table of router 2? Well, the reason you don't see that is that you've got 10.10.12.0 already in your routing table and that's a directly connected link right there. You already know about it so it makes no sense to see it through OSPF. And another way to think about it is you directly know about it because you made it. It's right here. It's directly connected. You're not going to trust another router telling you what you already know. Okay, let's move router 2 out of the way. Go to the last router and this is router 3. And on router 3, let's try a couple interesting things here. We'll do conf t router OSPF. That's the same. And the network statement we're going to do for the link between router 2 and router 3. Let's do 10, 10, 0, 0, 0 0.0.255, 255, area 0. That will match this interface. And then we're going to do, and you can see the adjacency comes up pretty much right away there. And then we're going to match 3.0.0.0.0.255.255.255. So that would be a slash 8, area 0. Okay, let's go back to router 1. Do a show IP route. And you can see here that I have a link, I have a route to this wonderful address right here, 3.3.3.3, which is the loopback of router 3. Even though when I made, when I entered in the network on router 3, I typed in network 3.0.0.0. Right, notice how those two are different. So this network command, once again, does not actually enter a network with this address into OSPF. It merely matches the interface. So it looks at the interface and goes, okay, does 3.3.3.3 fit into 3.0.0.0? Yes, it fits into there. And therefore, if it fits, I'm going to take the actual IP address and pop it into OSPF. And that's how we know on router 1 that we have the link to the actual slash 32. Okay, so that was a pretty good thing. We'll end up with doing a show IP OSPF neighbors. And you can see here from router 1, I have router 2 as the neighbor. All right, so that was a quick and easy router configuration of basic OSPF.